Welcome to another Wednesday's Word. This morning in my Bible reading, there's an odd story where Joseph's at the end of his life and he's blessing his sons. Now, if I was just reading that story, I'd think that Joseph was going to end up being the long-term leader of Israel. That's really how he positions himself. Judah's not a great guy. But you see that Judah is given this, this elevated blessing. Now, Joseph, his two sons get their own blessings, and I'll get to that in a second. But it says that Judah's scepter would not depart from them. And that's a beginning, a foreshadowing of the line of David that would lead us to Jesus. And it's one of the ways that we see that God doesn't take the ones who always distinguish themselves best. He blesses who he blesses. Just after that, Joseph takes his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, and brings them, expecting Jacob to bless the older with a bigger blessing and the younger with a lesser blessing. And Joseph crosses his hand, or Jacob crosses his hands and blesses the younger. And Joseph calls him out on it because, no, he will be a great people. And yeah, his, little, his older brother will be okay too. And again, you see that God constantly blesses the younger. Now, as Americans, this doesn't make a lot of sense because birth order isn't that important unless you're studying those psychology trends that were popular a while ago. But in the ancient world, the oldest had a bigger set of privileges, a bigger set of entitlements, and a bigger set of responsibility. And one of the things that God constantly does is upsets what we see as the normal social order and dignify the undignified, lift up those who should be excluded, give status to those who don't earn status on their own. It's one of those little reminders throughout the Bible that God is a God of the unexpected, a God of grace, a God who it says in one of the harder passages to understand, I will bless whom I bless, I will love who I love. I blessed Jacob and Esau before they had done anything good or bad, but Jacob I have loved, Esau I have hated. That's a bit of a paraphrase, but it's just saying that God didn't look through the window of time and say, okay, Jacob's going to be a better man than Esau. Jacob wasn't a good man. God just chose to bless him. And I look at my own life and think that I have not done anything to earn God's favor. It's not that God was in history looking through the world saying, okay, who should I call? Who should I save? Who is going to choose me of their own accord? If that was the case, I would still be in the dark. Instead, God, before the foundation of the world, said, I choose to bless some people. I want to give my love to people who, who don't even know how to love me back. So I'm going to set up the whole Bible, the whole system in the Bible throughout history, build a church, send my son, all so that these people could see my love, receive my glory, and glorify my name. So think about that when you're wondering if you're cast out, if you're undeserving. As you read some of these odd Bible stories about Manasseh and Ephraim, Remember that what God is doing is calling our attention to the fact that we don't deserve his love. It's just a free gift. That's all I got. Have a great week.